I'm here with Angelica Duenas, who is a candidate for Congress running in California's 29th district. You're running in a jungle primary, I hear. So you don't have to worry about going after a Democratic candidate from the left. And the Democratic Party hopefully won't smear you as someone who wants Trump to secretly win or something like that. <laughs> That's right, that's right. We already got through the primary and now we have this opportunity here in the 29th district to have um, a progressive takeover and um, really give the people an option and um, a candidate, a representative that's willing to fight for the people and not the corporation. Right, and you have an enormously progressive platform, healthcare is a human right, criminal justice reform, a Green New Deal, public education as a right. You talk about progressive foreign policy in your platform. Can you expand upon that? Because it drives me nuts how underserved that topic is. Say just on issues of you know Yemen or how we deal with Israel. What are some of your ideas on that front? Yes, um, I think that one of the things that we have in our platform that should be highlighted is um, the idea of cutting the cutting military spending by fifty percent. We're not talking about you know. Um, ending our military or anything drastic like that. What we're talking about is if you take a look at where military spending is going, I mean, 50% of it outright goes to private contractors. Um, less than 25% of military spending actually goes to the military, to the people. It gets spent away on a, a private contract, on purchasing arms, but at the end of it all, they get unused, most of them. And when they do get used, is to cause destruction. And or to pass them on to other countries to do the destruction by proxy for us. Um, so when we're talking about a foreign policy, we're talking about a foreign policy based on peace and really um, building a, um, a communication and commitments uh, throughout the world for peace. And that's throughout the Middle East, that's throughout uh, uh, South America, and, and really throughout the world. Um, we want to really emphasize the that many of the of the of the problems that we're seeing here in the United States is because of um, problems that we have caused in one way or another. Some people see the immigration issue that has been um, plaguing um, uh, uh, some folks as far as because they need to leave their country, leave their home because of of either war, uh, famine, or economic hardship. Um, and now we're seeing actually environmental uh, crisis also as a reason why people are needing to move. They're not able to uh, plant the crops that they once were able to. They're not able to really, you know, they don't have water that they usually have access to because of drought. So these are all of these things that need to be focused on. And instead of really spending our our funding on war, we need to be funding um, and and and. Um, uh, emphasizing the importance of climate change and really um, communications building and um, partnerships that we need to focus on. We need to focus on life, um, not death. And that is really what we're trying to, to emphasize in our platform top to bottom and locally and um, uh, uh, globally. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. Unfortunately, no one gets rich off that kind of thinking. So what are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> but speaking though of those kinds of topics, you did, uh, I guess uh, in 2017, protest outside Senator Dianne Feinstein's office and in, uh, in order to secure more humane treatment um, of our dreamers. and. She has been central to so many of the military industrial complexes desires her her work on the intelligence committee. Can you talk about why you felt the need to protest in front of her office and how that informs your candidacy and just also the topics you were just discussing? We were there in support of one of a, a dreamer that led a, a, a group of people who um, we were trying to push and this happened throughout the country. So we were one of many groups that were going to their representative's office and asking, demanding that they uh, did not vote, did not approve the budget for the year, did, did not vote um, to approve the budget to hold back and to as the Democratic Party, uh, you know, really force uh, for the Republicans to um, include a dream act 
in the year's budget. So we wanted um, not a DACA, which is a temporary deferment of, of, of deportation, but a permanent solution, a path to, to citizenship. Unfortunately, um, you know, the Democrats did not uh, did not um, stand with the Dreamers, and they went ahead and pushed to approve the, the budget that year. So that was the, the action that we took. And um, unfortunately, we were not even allowed to enter the lobby. We were arrested <laughs> the second that we sat down uh, in front of the building and uh, whisked away off premises. Fortunately, um, we were not brought in um, since we, we did have a dreamer with us. We didn't want to affect his status in any sort of way. So we did you know, listen to uh, the officer's warnings that if we did return that there would be an actual arrest. And so fortunately, nobody was arrested. We were just removed from the property. Well, that's good news um, because unfortunately, officers sometimes don't give that forewarning, uh, especially when dealing with left wing protesters as opposed to right wingers, which obviously we've seen so much throughout this year. Um, so can you talk about that? What you just referenced about democratic weakness when it comes to negotiations. Part of what Republicans do is they leverage the marginally greater humanity that Democrats have to get away with absolute atrocities. So Democrats are really unable to be strategic in the kind of things that they're negotiating over in Congress because they will just fold quite quickly. Why do you think that is and what do you bring differently as a stronger progressive voice in this race? I mean, I think what it is is that you know what we've been um, our hunch is really that you know the people that are in power are not there to represent the people; they're there to represent the, the corporations and their overlords. And so, when it comes down to it, the these people who are in power, um, they are you know this is what they've done; this is what they do. And what it is is that we do not have real representation. Um, in, in any sort of level of government, you know, we do not have working class representation, and that's the problem. We have people who have been bought out and who have, you know, have been compromised. So this is what we're seeing. We're seeing compromised representation, and that is why I'm running for for Congress here in the Cali in California 29th Congressional District. Because much like what we're seeing from both sides um, uh, of the aisle. We're seeing from our representative Tony Cardenas, who has actually been in power here in our in our community for over 23 years at all levels. He had eight years in the state assembly, 10 years in city council, and now eight years in Congress. And throughout his career, he's shown us very, very much the same. His loyalty lies with the corporations. He's taken millions and millions of dollars from mega corporations um, in his 20 plus years of, of uh, being a, a politician. You know, he's a career politician and um, it's time to put an end to that. You know, I believe in term limits. I believe that, you know, representing our community should be a civil service that you do it and you move on. Um, and so this is where we're at. We're, we're seeing that we have people who have been bought out and who are not prepared to represent us. So it's our responsibility as the people to vote these people out and to look around us to for the replacement. Who are we going to put in power? Because these positions are out. I advocate for seeking out positions of power and occupy them. So this is what our, our homework is, this is our role. Right now that we're seeing our ballot book come out and our sample books come out, we need to take a look at who's in these seats and who needs to get voted out. Well, certainly. And lastly, just to touch on your race specifically, you're in a solid blue district. Your opponent has won fairly handily over and over again, and now you're a challenge to that. Um, have you gotten any pushback from the National Democratic Party or the DCCC or anything like that, even though it's two Democrats in the general election? So they really shouldn't be taking any sides ostensibly and mm -hmm. should be happy with whoever wins the seat. Um, well, what I can say is that locally, um, the Democratic Party has not um, listened to us or even brought us into the discussion or consideration for endorsements or any of the sort. So we're definitely not getting the support. Um, he's gotten endorsed um, by the local and the national Democratic Party. Um, so we're not getting pushback per se. Um, we've been, if anything, ignored for the time being and um, left out. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's kind of uh, their, their their playbook. They could be going after you and smearing you regularly. I'm I'm happy. This seems like a a better scenario for you than the alternative outcome. But still, look, I mean, we already know where their where their loyalties lie. It's with the candidate that's furthest to the right, unless they go completely over the pale and they start saying anti-choice things or whatever, like Dan Lipinski. But yeah, I I, I think it's awesome. That you've made it to the general, and that you're fortunately going to be able to mount a mount a challenge here. So, wish you the best of luck. And where can people find out more about your race? You can find us at angelica 4 congresscom That's Angelica, the number four, Congress.com. Check us out. Maybe we can earn your support. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store or at tyt.com slash podcast.